um, I hope you can hear me. And um, I just want to be able to look at um, uh, these particular uh, objectives that we have for uh, today's session, uh, where we just want to be able to do some introductory aspects of grants management. And then uh, secondly, we will also be able to discuss uh, the different types, uh, the different grant types, uh, that is um, uh, the grant application and also grant proposals because uh, it is always good to know uh, because sometimes um, how you are able to apply uh, for, a, for, 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 for a grant uh, will either be able to involve um, a grant and, um, and uh, it's always good to be able to know uh, is it an application uh, that I'm supposed to apply or is it a grant proposal uh, that I'm expected to actually be able to respond with? So, uh, so therefore, we will need to be able to look at um, uh, the different grant types that we have. And um, one of the uh, types that we will delving much more into uh, is especially uh, the grant application, where you are expected to make an application uh, before you actually receive some grant funding. Uh, then again, also, uh, we will also be looking at uh, grant proposals, and um, that's something that we want also to make sure that we can understand. Uh, so the next thing uh, will also be to review uh, the grant management uh, life cycle. Uh, that is just uh, make sure that um, we are able to uh, understand what are some of the critical phases uh, in the grant management uh, life cycle uh, as expected. Uh, then again, also, uh, we will also be able to look at some key issues uh, in grant management. So we'll be, um, be able to review what are some of the issues that come in uh, in the grant uh, management uh, process as well. So that's something that um, uh, we might also uh, want to be able to understand as well. So, uh, so we'll be looking at some of those things uh, to make sure uh, that we are able to uh, understand uh, some of those things as, as much as possible. Now, the other thing that uh, would also be able to, want to be able to look at uh, is the issue uh, to do with um, a review of contract management uh, in grants management. Uh, it's also something that we might also uh, want to be able to understand. And um, at the end of this session, uh, we will also be able to look at um, a participants' feedback session. Uh, at the end of this presentation as well. So this is something that um, uh, we would want to be able to ensure uh, that we are able to put in place as, as much as possible. So we will be able, uh, at the end of my presentation, I will be able to get your feedback and your question uh, and answer session. Uh, we will also be able to do it at that particular uh, very end. So, uh, so let's just be the first thing uh, where we need to look at um, introduction uh, to grant management. The key issue we will be asking ourselves here is what, what essentially is grant management? Because uh, it is important for us to be able to understand uh, what exactly we are looking into uh, when you talk about uh, grant management. As so, so this is something that um, uh, we will be able to ensure uh, that we can ensure that uh, we are able to address this particular question as expected. What is grant management? Uh, management. And I just want to address that question. I uh, just want to address that question by just uh, being able to explain a number of things uh, that we actually need to be able to understand uh, when you talk about um, uh, grant management. And um, the first thing that I'm going to be able to start with uh, is simply to be able to, uh, is just simply to, to be able to define some definitions, uh, some uh, critical uh, definitions that we actually need to be able to uh, understand. And uh, this is something that um, uh, we will actually need to be able to, uh, uh, we will need to be able to understand uh, as much as, as possible. So, uh, so let's just look at some uh, uh, definitions. And um, one of the definitions that we are going to start with today, uh, is specifically uh, what do we mean when we mean a uh, grant? And um, uh, when you talk about a grant, uh, we're simply referring to uh, a funding contract uh, between the funding agency and the recipient uh, to be able to support an organization uh, activities and deliverables as actually detailed in their proposal or application, because remember, we say that um, uh, in the grant management uh, process, 
uh, is either you get a grant uh, through uh, an application uh, or you actually get a grant through a proposal. So those are the two main ways uh, in which you can be able to access uh, a grant. And so uh, when you talk about a grant, please understand it's a funding contract between the funding agency, that is the donor, and also the recipient, which could be an organization or an individual, uh, to be able to support um, the organizational activities or project activities and deliverables uh, as detailed in your proposal or application, uh, which definitely enables you, uh, the individual or the organization or the project, to be able to perform uh, some specified activities uh, for the common good. So that's what we specifically mean uh, when you talk about a grant. So, uh, so when you talk about a grant, uh, that is uh, specifically uh, what we actually uh, want to be able to mean. So, so it's important for us to be able to understand that uh, so that we understand uh, what exactly uh, grant management actually involves uh, as much as possible. Now, the other thing uh, that we would want also to be able to emphasize uh, is uh, is the issue of the grantor. Uh, grantor uh, is also something that we might also uh, be able to want to be able to emphasize. And um, when you talk about a grantor, uh, we're saying that um, a grantor, uh, also known as a grant maker or a funder, uh, is simply the organization or the funding organization or agency that is able to receive your funding request and basically decides to be able to fund it uh, or actually reject it as, 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 as you'd expect. Um, uh, in case it does not qualify, then it will actually be rejected. If it qualifies, then it will actually lead you to being uh, funded for uh, the activities that you actually uh, want to be able to take place. Now, the other thing that um, is important also to uh, define is basically uh, the grantee. And uh, when you talk about the grantee, uh, we're simply meaning this is uh, an, um, uh, an organization or an individual that is actually designated to be able to receive a grant award. And so that's why we refer to them as grantees. And uh, most of you who have received uh, grants uh, from funding agencies, uh, then you will actually be able to refer to yourself as grantees. And then what is a grant proposal? This is another term that you will hear a lot. Uh, about um, um, uh, something to do with a grant proposal. So exactly uh, what do we mean when we talk about a grant proposal? Now, this is simply a narrative description uh, of the work that a nonprofit organization uh, plans to undertake uh, so that it can be able to fulfill uh, its own uh, obligation or the grant maker uh, 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 goals. And so, uh, you will be able to do a narrative description of this, uh, specifically what your nonprofit organization um, um, wants to be able to undertake uh, so that you can be able to fulfill either your own goals or, <coughs> or the grant maker uh, or rather the grantor goals as required. Uh, so these are common terms that you will be able to hear. And it's always good that we are able to start this session uh, by just being able to mention so that uh, it can actually uh, come out clearly to everyone on exactly uh, what we mean when you talk about a grantor, a grantee, and a grant proposal uh, as expected. Now, uh, it is important to note uh, that um, all, grant, um, uh, all grants uh, will always require the grantee uh, to be able to use the funds as promised in the grant application or the grant proposal. And so uh, one of the things that um, we need to be able to understand uh, is that um, uh, we are always uh, required to make sure that the funds actually are used as per the grant proposal or as per the grant application as much as possible. And this is what happens, especially when we are not able to get the funds uh, uh, the second time that we apply, because uh, even the first instance where we apply, we were not able to meet uh, the requirements um, that we were able to specify uh, in the grant application or in the grant proposal, then um, it basically means that we cannot actually be able to receive the funds as expected. So, uh, so it is important to make sure that um, we're able to utilize the funds 
as per the grant um, um, as per the grant uh, application or proposal. Now, I think the other thing that we also need to emphasize is that um, uh, it is important uh, to make sure uh, that grant management uh, will basically include all the administrative responsibilities that are required to be completed uh, during the time frame of the grant. And for most of us who have worked with grants, you know that this is uh, something that um, encompasses uh, most of the grants that we will actually receive because um, uh, whenever you receive a grant, then there are all these list of administrative responsibilities that you actually need to be able to do uh, to make sure that you can actually be able to complete uh, your grant within the time frame of the grant. And it's always good uh, to make sure uh, that we are able to um, uh, we're able to um, uh, ensure that those administrative activities are actually uh, completed. And uh, what will be some of those administrative activities? It will be probably uh, being able to uh, prepare progress reports about the activities that you're implementing as part of your grant. Uh, also being able to share some financial reports or, or capturing some of the financial transactions that you are uh, that are actually uh, involved in the grant that you are able to receive, and um, all of those um, become very very uh, critical uh, steps uh, in terms of ensuring that um, you can actually be able to um, uh, complete uh, the grant within the time frame that you actually expect. So, uh, grant management uh, will therefore include all these. Uh, administrative responsibilities uh, that you actually need to complete during the time frame uh, of your grant as as much as expected now the other thing um, and the other thing uh, is simply uh, to make sure that um, uh, the grant management uh, basically ensures that you are keeping all the promises um, uh, all the promises that are made uh, in the project proposal um, meaning uh, you're able to stay in compliance uh, with uh, terms of the grant and also following through on all the deliverables and submitting reports according to the funder's requirements. And this is something that um, uh, is always expected. Uh, every time you're managing a grant a management process, uh, you'll always realize that um, you have to make sure uh, that you're able to stay in compliance uh, within the terms of the grant. Remember, um, at the last... Uh, um, um, uh, part of this section, we will be looking at contract management and we will be able to emphasize uh, that uh, for most grants, um, uh, you will always end up with a contract. And so in that contract, it will stipulate the terms and conditions that you actually have to meet uh, in ensuring that you are able to uh, administrate the contract as expected. Uh, so it's very, very important to make sure that we are able uh, to keep within the compliance uh, of the terms of the grant as expected. Now, what you will find uh, is that most successful organizations, uh, most successful organizations, uh, one of the things that you will find is that they will always have a very solid grant management program uh, that simply uh, starts long before any grant is actually awarded. And so uh, successful organizations uh, will always have a solid, uh, a solid grant management program uh, that normally will always start before uh, the grant is actually awarded. Because a lot of people think the grant management cycle starts when the grant is awarded, but you realize uh, that there is always a pre-grant award process um, that we always uh, need to be very, very uh, well managed uh, because it's actually what determines uh, exactly uh, whether. Uh, we have actually been able to um, 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 put a good uh, grant management program uh, by ensuring that grants are simply managed way before they are actually awarded. And that's something that's very, very important to be able to note. Now, grant management also includes a number of things. And um, uh, if you're going to be uh, a successful organization or a successful individual uh, in terms of ensuring uh, that you're able to manage your grants well. Uh, so it is important uh, to make sure that um, um, uh, grant management uh, basically includes strategic planning. Uh, so, so it's important uh, to make sure uh, that this 
uh, includes um, uh, uh, strategic planning. Uh, this also ensures efficient grant design. And also, uh, this ensures that there is proper program development and effective tracking uh, to ensure that you have sufficient resources uh, to be able to smoothly uh, to be able to smoothly uh, manage the uh, the process as expected. So it's always good uh, to make sure that we have a good uh, grant management process that basically includes strategic planning, uh, basically includes efficient grant design and program development, and also ensures effective tracking and also having sufficient resources uh, to make sure that you can manage the grant management process uh, very, very well. So, uh, so I think we have been able to uh, be able to introduce uh, some uh, introductory concepts about uh, grant management. And um, uh, it is important that we are able to understand some of those things because they become very, very important uh, whenever you're managing a grant management uh, process uh, as expected. Now, the other thing that we want to be able to turn our attention to uh, is simply uh, be able to look at the whole issue uh, of grant management life cycle, uh, which um, I'll just mention it um, uh, briefly, uh, but I'll be getting into deeper details about it uh, later on, uh, because we also uh, have to narrow down uh, into this uh, later on uh, in the session. So I'll be looking at it uh, very, very comprehensively. Um, as I look at um, uh, some of the things that are critical. Remember, we've said a very important point that grant management uh, is, is, is not when, uh, is, uh, the process does not just involve uh, when you just receive a grant. The process actually starts way before you receive uh, the, uh, the grant award. And uh, you can see that that's something that is captured in this particular uh, process. And uh, you can see that uh, effective grant management is important uh, throughout the entire life of grant uh, management, which can be broken into five uh, key stages. So there are basically uh, five important uh, key stages uh, that we actually need to be able to consider uh, when you talk about um, uh, the grant uh, management process. Uh, so we need to be able to uh, ensure that we are able uh, to consider these critical uh, phases. And so uh, I just want to, um, uh, there, there, uh, of course, there are different uh, methodologies that show the different um, life cycles of grant management. Uh, but I, I just want to use this specific one uh, where we are able to narrow down uh, the phases uh, or the stages uh, of the grant management life cycle uh, into five areas uh, where number one, we are able to start with what we call pre award uh, is the first stage uh, of grant management process, uh, which we actually refer to pre-award uh, stage. And so we have pre-award stage. Uh, secondly, we have award um, a phase or award uh, stage. Then we have post-award. Then we have closeout. And then we have audit as the five critical stages uh, for the grant management life cycle. So those are the five uh, critical stages. Uh, for the uh, uh, for the management uh, grant management uh, life cycle or process, uh, which we actually uh, need to be familiar with as much as possible. So we have pre-award, then we have award, then we have post-award, and then we have closeout, and then lastly we have what we are calling audit. Uh, as a so it is important for us to be able to uh, realize. Uh, some of those things as as smart as possible. So, uh, so it is important uh, to make sure uh, that we can actually be able to uh, utilize that as as much as as possible. Now, uh, so later on, I'll 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 be taking you through what exactly uh, we expect. Uh, so, as soon as you have your idea of what you want to get funded for, then you will move into these uh, different stages. Uh, in the grant management uh, life cycle. So you'll be able to move to pre-award, then you will also be able to move to award, and then after that you will move to post-award, then you will be able to move to closeout, and then you will also be able to move to audit, and uh, that becomes the last stage uh, that you're able to uh, um, uh, get into. Now, the other critical question to be able to ask yourself, and this is quite, quite important, 
uh, is ensuring that you are able to assess your readiness uh, for grant funds because grant funds are not accessed by anyone. And um, this is the fact that you can see. Um, uh, when you look at uh, one of the things that I uh, normally give as, as an example uh, in most forums that are presented on grant management uh, is I always um, ask the participants, uh, why do international uh, um, governmental, non-governmental organizations uh, always have a lot of grant funding? And this is not the same case uh, with community-based organizations. And the issue is not because of uh, capacity, uh, but, but how comes they actually become very, very, um, uh, very uh, successful in getting a lot of grant funding? And the issue goes into some of these questions that we will actually be able to specify here. Uh, this, uh, these questions uh, will always actually be able to tell you uh, whether we are ready to be able to go for grant funding. Number one, uh, one of the critical questions that we will always uh, be able to consider uh, is the question to do with um, uh, what is our organization's mission, purpose, goals, um, and um, whether this is already well established and articulated. Uh, do we have a strategic plan or do we have an operational plan in place? And this is the differentiator uh, into, into why uh, we are able to receive grant funding. So you realize organizations that have, have been very, very mature uh, in terms of um, uh, 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 being able to show uh, their organizational mission, their organizational vision, uh, their purpose and their goals, and uh, ensuring that that is well established and articulated, uh, we realize that some most of those organizations will actually be able to, uh, uh, these organizations will actually uh, be stand a very good chance uh, of being able to uh, show, uh, of being able to ensure that um, uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are stand a very good chance because uh, funding agencies will actually look at um, uh, some of the, uh, the, the mission, the vision, the purpose and the goals for these organizations. And they have been well articulated and they have actually been actually uh, well uh, achieved uh, by some of these organizations. And because of that, then you realize these organizations stand a very good chance of receiving uh, donor funding. Then the other thing is also the issue of uh, the fact that uh, um, um, does my organization have financial procedures in place? Now, this is actually what uh, separates organizations that actually uh, are successful in grant funding uh, and those ones that are not successful. Because if you don't have financial procedures actually in place, if you don't uh, even have annual audits in your organization, then how do you expect to be able uh, to uh, manage uh, some of the, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the uh, some of the uh, funding that you're going to receive if your organization has actually not been able uh, to be able to, um, uh, to show the difference um, uh, between um, uh, an organization that is able to conduct financial procedures and an organization that is not able to conduct financial procedures as expected. So this is another fact uh, that allows you to be ready for grant funding. Now, the other thing is to ask yourself, uh, um, uh, do we think we are actually, do we have the needed staff uh, in place to ensure that we can do what we promised? Because that's another uh, key uh, uh, decision uh, that will ensure that um, you are actually funded uh, or you are not actually funded. Uh, because um, if you don't have, uh, if you don't uh, fund, uh, if you don't actually have the needed staff, then who is going to implement this grant activity? Okay. And uh, so it's a very critical question to make sure uh, that we are actually able to have it in place. After all, a grant proposal is a contract. And if we do not have the ability to get the right staff in place quickly and effectively, um, uh, uh, when we are awarded a, a grant, then how will the organization be able to actually understand uh, that we can be able to uh, get grant, um, we can be able to implement uh, the grant activities as per the grant contract. So, so the issue of staff is important and that's why uh, when you have an organization, make sure you have the right uh, staff uh, to be able to implement the activities of the grant because this is something 
um, that um, uh, to be able to ensure that um, we are able to manage that. So there's somebody who's asking um, uh, what happens uh, for a some small organization uh, with about three to five um, staff uh, uh, to be able to have some financial procedures. Yes, it is important because uh, remember, you know, funding agencies don't want to find a situation where uh, this mis misappropriation of finances, and that's why. Uh, then, if you if you continue looking at an organization as being a very small organization, so it does not have it does not need to have financial procedures, then there be it, you will not get grant funding. And so it is it is why uh, it is important to make sure that regardless of whether the organization is small or whether the organization is big. Put the basics in place. Make sure that financial procedures are evident, and um, that's very, very important to be able to do that. And uh, if you want to get into um, uh, courses also uh, to do with uh, financial uh, management and budgeting, then you can always be able to talk to us, and I'm sure Irene will be guiding you onto that because that's those are also courses uh, that we can also be able to take you uh, through so that you know what you actually need to be able to put in place uh, to make sure that donors are actually attracted to what you are offering. Now, the other thing is um, another key question is, are we prepared to do what it takes uh, to be able to meet the requirements that um, come with receiving grant funding? That's another critical question for us to be able to understand. Are we able to uh, do uh, what it takes uh, so that we can be able to meet the requirements uh, that actually come with receiving uh, grant funding. And so some of these requirements uh, might actually include uh, some or all of the following. Uh, so what are some of those things that um, uh, will uh, that involve? Uh, so one is quarterly and semi-annual or annual progress reports because uh, nobody will give you grant funding and you're not able to uh, give progress reports, and this could be quarterly, could be semi-annually, could be annual, could even be monthly uh, progress reports. And again, also, um, are you able to do ongoing program evaluation? Uh, so ensuring that as the project is being implemented, as the program is being implemented, uh, that you are able to do uh, ongoing, uh, you are actually able to do uh, ongoing progress reports as expected. So this is something that uh, uh, is very, very uh, critical uh, to make sure uh, that we are able to achieve as, as much as possible. Now, the other thing is uh, ensuring that we are able to participate uh, in special training and also ensuring that we are able to attend conferences and meetings. Uh, that is uh, something that would be crucial uh, with a particular, uh, with particular uh, a um, uh, uh, grant. Uh, so there are certain uh, grants that uh, you will find that that is very, very important to make sure that uh, we will not be able to provide you a grant and you cannot attend a uh, special training conducted by funding agencies or attending uh, crucial conferences or meetings uh, organized by the funding agency. Uh, it will be important for you uh, to make sure that you can actually be able to attend some of those uh, things. So, so what do grant funds um, uh, actually fund? I think it is also good uh, to make sure that we have an understanding of that. Uh, so, so grant funds will basically be able to fund things like capital. Uh, they will also be able to ensure that they fund uh, general operating expenses. And um, uh, those are some of the things, uh, especially if it is an unrestricted grant. Uh, it can make sure that it is able to fund the everyday operations of the applicant organization. Uh, again, also, they can also fund technical assistance. Uh, that is a grant that is made to strengthen the nonprofit organization, uh, staff development, infrastructure, or any function that actually needs uh, to uh, uh, get some improvement. Then there's also what we call an endowment uh, grant, uh, which is a uh, grant that is invested in perpetuity uh, so that the nonprofit can draw earnings uh, from the fund uh, so that it can be able to support its defined purpose as expected. So, uh, so, so this is an investment that is done in perpetuity uh, so that um, as a particular uh, nonprofit can be able to draw earnings from, from that. So 
Uh, so, so it is important uh, that we're able to do that. Uh, then again, also grant funding can be able to fund a challenge that is a grant made to stimulate giving uh, from other sources uh, so that the donor is able to release funds uh, only after the grantee has actually been able to meet the challenge. And usually a specified amount of money uh, um, and um, uh, 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 money to be raised is normally outlined uh, in the grant uh, agreement. So, uh, so if you are to meet a certain challenge, then um, uh, one of the things is that uh, the donor will actually only release the fund once the grantee has actually uh, met that particular challenge. This normally happens a lot, especially in conservation projects uh, where um, uh, some funding agencies uh, will demand that you are able to meet, uh, like for instance, uh, distribution of trees uh, for um, uh, in a particular area, and uh, if we can actually be able to manage uh, to ensure that um, a number of trees are planted in a particular area, then that's only when uh, certain uh, funds are actually released. And uh, uh, it is important for us to be able to uh, make sure that that can actually be released um, um, as expected. So, uh, so those are some of the things that actually allow um, uh, your funding uh, to be released uh, uh, based on that regard. Now, also, what are other ways in which grants are able to fund? So there's also what you call matching. Uh, basically, uh, uh, when you talk about matching, these are basically grant funds that correspond to those of other donors. Uh, that is fund that will match to one of the other donors uh, within a specified time period. And um, matching has become uh, quite crucial uh, in today's uh, grant funding process uh, where uh, the donor will say, uh, I'm going to give you 70%. And I'm expecting you to meet 30% uh, of uh, this particular funding. So, so this is becoming quite critical uh, in today's grant funding process. Then again, also uh, demonstration, that is a grant that is made uh, to develop an innovative project or program that if successful, uh, will serve as a model for others uh, to be able to replicate. And again, also uh, the um, grant funds can also fund startups uh, that is uh, the grant uh, that is able to cover the cost of starting a new project or organization. And startup grants are also called uh, seed grants. And um, it is important to know that that is something that you can also find um, grants funding for, for that. Again, also, is uh, we also look at exploratory planning. That is a grant that is able to enable an organization uh, to flesh out a good idea uh, develop a stronger project and also uh, a project implementation plan um, uh, that will test a theory or a plan of action, especially. This is more so in research related uh, funding. Uh, is basically where we are able to find uh, exploratory uh, uh, funding. And um, that's where you can also be able to find grant uh, funding uh, being able to use. Now, I just want to cross over and uh, basically just um, also um, highlight uh, this whole issue of um, um, how uh, we are able to uh, look at uh, grant, um, um, uh, grant uh, types. And uh, as we see, there are definitely two types of grant types. Uh, we either have a grant application or we also have what we call a grant proposal as expected. Now let me be able to uh, be able to uh, discuss this uh, in two ways. Uh, so we just want to be able to uh, look at grant um, applications as um, as something that um, uh, we are able to look at um, um, uh, uh, proactive uh, grant seeking and also what we call reactive grant seeking, uh, which is basically deals with proposals. Uh, most of the time. So proactive grant seeking uh, deals with applications and then um, uh, reactive grant seeking deals with uh, grant proposals. Uh, so uh, let us be able to just basically address what uh, does uh, proactive um, grant seeking basically uh, involve. So, so basically when you're doing proactive or unsolicited grant seeking, uh, basically describes the process of identifying um, um, uh, and appropriate matches between programs of funders and nonprofits applying for grants, 
and um, it basically requires the grant seeker uh, uh, or uh, you, you know uh, the grant seeker or the grantee to be able to understand the philanthropy as practiced by charitable giving uh, foundations and is able to research specific foundation giving patterns and be able to connect the mission and the goals of the nonprofit organization uh, with those of the prospective funders as expected. So, uh, so that's something that um, we are able to find. Whereas um, uh, reactive or solicited grant seeking uh, is where we're able to describe the process of responding to a request for proposals. So, uh, so normally, uh, if you're going to uh, be able to respond uh, to a proposal, then this is what we normally classify as um, a reactive uh, grant seeking. Now, let's just uh, explore uh, uh, in detail uh, what we mean uh, when we are thinking about um, proactive uh, grant application uh, process. Now, uh, when it comes to proactive grant application process, uh, this is simply uh, what we actually uh, mean. Uh, this basically means um, uh, we are able to identify uh, the needs for funding at the nonprofit organization. And uh, normally, uh, how do you start um, uh, looking at the needs for funding at a particular nonprofit organization? So, this is uh, some of the questions that. Uh, uh, is important for you to be able to ask yourself uh, when you're thinking about um, uh, being able to seek for some funds. So one of the critical questions uh, that you should always be able to ask is what is the mission and what are the goals of this particular nonprofit? So, uh, so it is important to make sure uh, that we're able to ask ourselves uh, what exactly are we uh, uh, um, looking into in terms of this particular nonprofit and then again, what programs are we launching or sustaining? And then also, what are the important outcomes of those projects? And who are going to be the project beneficiaries? And also, uh, what are some of the outstanding needs that we need to be able to be familiar with? So that's something that um, we need to make sure uh, that we are able to understand uh, in a very clear way. Then again, also, when you understand the organization uh, potential uses for the grant, uh, then you can use that information to grant us uh, that share in the organization uh, mission and goals. And that's why earlier on we said understanding your organization is very, very uh, important. Then what do you do uh, after, you, <clears throat> after you have a very good understanding of your own organization? Uh, then you can proceed uh, to step number two, uh, where is now where we do searches, uh, what we are calling grantar searches. Uh, that is ensuring uh, that you are uh, able to search for all grantors that do funding uh, for the non-profit non organization. So you're able to go and check um, uh, some of these uh, uh, grantors, uh, what do they actually fund, and um, uh, what is uh, the funding that is actually provided uh, for this non uh, for this non-profit organization uh, as expected. Remember. Uh, it is good uh, as you do your search for grantors uh, or for funding organizations, please understand that um, a lot of funding agencies do not accept unsolicited proposals. So, uh, so it is important if you can understand that, uh, that not every uh, organization will actually be able to uh, accept, uh, accept uh, proposals. And um, a lot of people don't understand that. So they end up uh, throwing proposals <coughs> to funding agencies that did not actually solicit for proposals. And sometimes uh, it is always good uh, to make sure you understand the policies of certain funding uh, agencies, because if they have clearly said that they don't uh, receive um, proposals, uh, unsolicited proposals, please make sure you do not send one, because uh, then that will give you uh, a bad um, relationship with this particular funding uh, uh, agency. Then again, uh, after you learn about that, uh, it is also good uh, to expand your search um, and um, ensure that um, you are able also to search for international and national funders, uh, but only if yours is a project that has some special importance 
uh, to that particular fonda. So, so again, I think something that we're also emphasizing there is to make sure that um, uh, the project that you want to be funded for, make sure that it has a particular significance uh, to this funding agency that you want to be able to consider. So it's always good to make sure that you're able to do that. Then also, it's good to make sure you read grant making uh, guidelines. So uh, if you go to a funding agency, uh, make sure you understand uh, what are some of their grant making guidelines as expected, uh, because the guidelines uh, can actually be very simple or they can actually be very complex to be able to understand. So it's always good uh, to make sure that um, you are able to understand uh, the guidelines for some of these um, uh, uh, for some of these uh, organizations as as much as possible. Now the next thing uh, is um, uh, you can uh, be able to see uh, so if you identify uh, a number of funding agencies that you can actually be able to uh, approach, then it is important to see if you can contact the program or the grants officer. And um, uh, once you have been able to have a short list. Uh, of potential funders, then it is always good to be able to begin uh, contacting uh, program officers uh, so that you can be able to discuss your project as expected. So, uh, so that at that particular point, you can be able to move and ensure that you can contact uh, your um, uh, your uh, your program officers as expected. Again, also before you contact a program uh, officer in any grant organization, uh, make sure you have done your homework. Uh, very, very well. You can see, um, before you get to this uh, fourth step of contacting the program or grants officer, there are already some three steps ahead of this. And, and so it's important uh, to make sure that your homework is well done uh, before you, uh, you make contact. Then um, what will happen here after you uh, make contact, <coughs> then there will be what we call uh, pre-proposal uh, interviews or discussions. Um, now one of the things, uh, if at all possible, try to schedule a meeting or a phone call uh, with the grants officer uh, before submitting a proposal. Uh, this is especially important when you're trying, um, when especially you're, you're planning to submit uh, to a local funder. So if it's a funder that is locally available uh, in your geographical area, then it's always good to make sure you can plan um, a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Uh, it's only that now we are living in uh, uh, the uh, COVID-19 era uh, where sometimes one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings are uh, normally, uh, right now, uh, they, are, they, are, uh, uh, they are actually discouraged uh, because of the COVID-19 infections. And so maybe uh, what would be able to work, um, uh, especially uh, in the days that we're living in, is the issue of just having virtual meetings or a phone call. Uh, so one-on-one -on -one meetings sometimes might not be possible because of the challenges that uh, COVID-19 has actually been able to bring uh, in different uh, countries as well. Now, uh, so, so, so basically, and then uh, what happens after that uh, basically depends on how you agree uh, with the funding agency, uh, whether to be able to uh, make uh, your application or either to submit uh, a short proposal to them and uh, then they can be able to see how to be able to fund it. Now, if you then don't succeed uh, in the proactive uh, grant application process, uh, then you can always be able to uh, proceed with the second process, which is the active uh, grant proposal process, uh, which is also uh, very, very important uh, to be able to consider it as well. Now, what happens in the reactive grant proposal process? What normally uh, is the process uh, for the reactive grant proposal process? It is worth it to note that a lot of applications are submitted in the, uh, in the reactive grant proposal process. I think it's always good to emphasize that. A lot of this funding that you find uh, in different places uh, normally uh, will be funded through the active grant proposal process because a lot of funding agencies uh, will simply be able to look at um, how to be able to uh, fund, uh, get their funds. And uh, most of the times, uh, funding agencies will actually uh, uh, invite funding uh, through uh, some call for proposals. And that's why you will find that um, uh, because of uh, uh, some of the calls uh, for proposals, uh, that are available, then you will be able to see 
uh, you will be able to see a lot of uh, uh, organizations getting funded. Now, what is normally the planning process for reactive grant writing? So, uh, so what is uh, the process for this? Uh, we have already looked at the process for proactive uh, grant application process. And uh, now we want to look at um, the reactive grant proposal process. Now, uh, this particular process normally starts with reviewing the RFP. Um, and um, most of you know that um, RFP basically means request for proposal. Uh, so you start by reviewing uh, the RFP, or rather uh, what we call the RFP document, uh, because if a certain funding agency wants to actually be able to, uh, uh, wants to actually If a certain funding agency uh, wants to be able to ensure that they are able to they're able to have um, um, a call for proposals, then what they will do, they will actually prepare an RFP uh, document. So it's always good to review that document. Then after you review the document, then it's always good uh, to be able to determine the fit between the non-profit organization and its programs, and also those outlined uh, in the request for proposal. So it's always good uh, to make sure that we can get the, uh, the correct fit uh, between the non-profit organization and its programs, and also those outlined uh, in the request uh, for proposals uh, as well. So, uh, so it is important to make sure uh, that we are able to determine uh, the correct fit between the non-profit organization and its programs and also those outlined in the request uh, for proposals as well. Now, um, uh, so therefore, a planning and a comprehensive response uh, that meets both the funder's requirements and the non-profit uh, mission and goals uh, is always critical. Uh, so it is important to make sure that we have a planning um, um, uh, a um, we, we are able to plan a comprehensive response that will meet what the funder is expecting and also our organizational uh, mission and goals as expected. Now, the proposal writing process uh, can basically include the following. Uh, so one of the things that you'll be able to do is you will gather information on the organization and the, the target population or the problem that you actually want to address. This is critical. Uh, in any proposal writing process, uh, being able to understand what's the target population, what are the problems that these particular communities face, and what do we want to do as an organization, or what are our strategic uh, priority areas as, as an organization. Then you will need to be able to study uh, this uh, so that you can, uh, you can familiarize yourself with it, uh, find out the development specific terms um, um, uh, mean so that you can explain them to others uh, if actually uh, needed as much as possible. Then the next thing that you will do uh, is to ensure that you can uh, outline the grant proposal. And so one of the things that you will be able to do uh, is you will ensure that you can actually be able to use um, every header uh, in the instructions uh, as your own and also keeping the headings uh, in the specific order given. In fact, this is something that we normally emphasize a lot because in most requests for proposals, they actually even recommend a format of the proposal. And a lot of people don't pay attention to that. Now, because uh, sometimes you, 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 you will always tend to think like um, uh, it's, it's a choice. And uh, most of the times when you realize a funding agencies are uh, asking for a particular format, uh, in the submission of the proposal, uh, it is always good to make sure that um, uh, you you are able to uh, you are able to subscribe to that because at the end of the day, uh, it is actually uh, it is actually the the uh, the donor that um, has actually been able to uh, request for that, and um, it is important for us to make sure uh, that we can actually be able to uh, uh, observe. Uh, those particular instructions and uh, ensure that even uh, our headings basically are, are actually submitted in the specific order given. Then again also, 
come up with a schedule for writing, reviewing, completing the forms, and securing the signatures. Uh, because what you find is that uh, most organizations uh, do not um, uh, come up with a schedule uh, for doing all these things. And so during the deadline for submission uh, is when they are trying to uh, uh, write at the same time, complete the necessary forms that are supposed to be completed and also secure signatures. So uh, what happens is that they send um, applications that are incomplete. And um, this is one of the challenges uh, that we will always be able to find. So it's always good uh, to make sure that we are able to find um, uh, some very good uh, orderly processes for being able to, uh, to ensure that um, we keep, uh, uh, we keep uh, to the schedule and ensure that we can submit within the deadline. Then again, also request letters of support from collaborators or draft an interagency agreement uh, for review by all partners. Then also another uh, tip that is critical is write as complete uh, as, as you can, the first draft as possible, uh, so that you can ensure that you can ensure that you can meet again uh, with the uh, proposal design team or client uh, or, 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 or the client, uh, in this case, the funding agency, uh, to make sure that you can review the draft as expected. And then again, also uh, write a second draft as expected, uh, which is also very, very important uh, to make sure that you're able to achieve that. Then again, also recruit an outsider reader, someone who is unfamiliar with your uh, organization or your agency and um, or the project, who can let you know whether they understand the project and whether they have any questions that need to be answered. And this is normally very, very good because it gives a very objective assessment of the proposal. And uh, for most organizations that normally do this, uh, they do what we call uh, independent proofreading. Uh, then, then, you know, that's very good because somebody who is not familiar with your organization uh, is able to see, is this particular proposal that you made here making sense? or actually it is not actually uh, able to, uh, to make sense. Because remember, uh, the same thing will happen. The funding agency does not know your organization. So they will actually uh, read this proposal as the independent reader that you have. So, so it's always good to make sure you can always be able to have that. Then again, also uh, another thing that we also emphasize, uh, complete uh, the final edits uh, based on the inputs uh, from the readers and also the design team. Uh, because it is always good to ensure you have enough time to review and also uh, to ensure that you have approval by all collaborators. Uh, make sure you complete all forms that are needed and ensure that you observe the schedule times uh, for securing the signatures and the required parties. Uh, normally, uh, your executive director or the board chair for the nonprofit. Then again, also uh, put the grant proposal packet uh, together and also ensure you make copies. Uh, a lot of people forget to do this. Um, I've seen instances where um, uh, 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 people don't make copies of some of the documents that they were actually given. And um, uh, something happens uh, that uh, in the funding agency, when they are looking at your document, uh, maybe something happens in their office that destroys their document. And so what they ask you is they ask you, because you submitted on time, uh, please, um, is it possible to give us uh, an exact copy of what you earlier submitted? And um, this can be very, very bad if you didn't make copies for what you submitted. It's always good to have a copy of what you submitted uh, so that uh, in case something happens and you are asked to resubmit, then you can always be able to have a basis for submitting. So generally, uh, you will send the original and a requisite number of copies. Uh, this always varies with the funder and reserve one for each of those uh, involved agencies uh, and, and, and one for your own uh, files as expected. Then uh, if, if you need to ship it, uh, if you need to uh, deliver it or upload it or deliver the grant uh, in whatever way needed, ensure that it actually arrives before the deadline. Uh, so it's always good to make sure that we can actually be able to uh, submit it before the deadline as expected. And so the other thing is, um, uh, is the issue of um, um, uh, what is 
the typical structure for grant proposals. So grant proposals we normally have some, some headings like cover letter, uh, executive summary, what is your need statement, what is your goals and objectives, what is your methods or methodology, what is your monitoring and evaluation plan, uh, what is your sustainability plan, and what is your organizational background and budget. Those are typical uh, components that will always be requested. But um, one of the things that we safely advise people uh, is that always make sure that you are able to understand uh, what a particular uh, uh, request for proposal is asking because that is basically uh, what guides you into exactly knowing uh, what is expected. So, uh, so it's always good uh, to make sure you subscribe to uh, the request for proposal uh, that has actually been shared. So, uh, so that's uh, one of the best guidelines to be able to guide you uh, anytime you are making uh, a request for proposal as expected. So, so that's uh, exactly what should be able to guide you. And so it is important to make sure that uh, you can always be able to pay uh, attention to that. Now, the other thing is, as we said, we also want to highlight uh, a few things about the grants management cycle. And uh, uh, let's also highlight a few things uh, on the grants uh, management cycle. So we mentioned it, uh, but we didn't uh, specify what exactly uh, needs to be able to go uh, into the different stages. So we mentioned about the pre-award phase. And um, in the pre-award phase, uh, it normally involves identification uh, of the different kinds of funding sources that we want to be able to support in our projects. Uh, so uh, ensuring that we can uh, identify uh, the different kinds of funding sources that we want to be able to support uh, your projects. And we have been able to emphasize this uh, in the proactive uh, grant application process. Uh, we were able to emphasize this uh, quite, quite clearly. And then secondly, we are also able to go into the award phase, uh, which basically uh, gives you the notification and an announcement of the grant that you actually uh, need to be able to receive. And then again also, uh, ensuring that you can negotiate awards uh, with funding sources. Uh, it's always good to make sure that you can actually be able to uh, negotiate your awards with the funding sources. And this normally happens in the award phase. And then also, uh, in the award phase, it's also important to make sure that you obtain uh, your organization's Vote and administrative approvals. And so once the award letter is actually received, the award must be accepted by the receiving organizations uh, before you start expending the funds and also implementing uh, the project activities as expected. And um, individuals uh, are not normally allowed to accept award uh, on, on behalf of the organization as expected. Uh, so it's always good to make sure that we are able to achieve that as much as possible. Then again, also setting up the grant account uh, is also critical. Uh, that is, once your grant is officially accepted uh, through, uh, through the approval, then the account uh, is set up um, uh, in the grantor funder system and the, uh, using the budget that was actually submitted. And then um, uh, a grant notification email uh, will include grant details such as the start and end date, the amount of the award, and other pertinent information is also actually sent as well. Then the organizational uh, project or grant officer or accountant will also uh, be handling the physical activity and reporting and auditing aspects of the project is also uh, involved. And they will also be able to answer any physical questions about your budget that you might want to be able to uh, uh, to confirm with them. Then the other part that normally happens is project management and evaluation. And most of us are aware uh, that um, uh, in the grant implementation period, then we need to be very cautious about ensuring that we have proper practices for project management and evaluation. And um, this is something that we will be emphasizing uh, in our next uh, free webinar. Uh, we'll be looking at project management. So for some of you, and um, I always say that uh, uh, it is important for everybody who works in grant management uh, to always ensure they have requisite skills in project management because a grant um, uh, implementation will not be successful uh, in case we do not have 
uh, project um, uh, management skills. So project management and uh, evaluation skills are very, very critical for ensuring that a grant um, uh, implementation uh, is always successful uh, as expected. So it's always good uh, to make sure that um, uh, we can successfully uh, be able to implement uh, uh, a grant application uh, in that kind of a way. Uh, again, also, the other thing is that uh, close attention must also be paid to the data and other information uh, that will need to be captured uh, for programmatic or for evaluation reasons as expected. So it's always good to make sure that we're able to pay close attention uh, to the data and information that we need to capture for pro programmatic and evaluation reasons. Then all records and documents must be retained uh, for the required number of years after the final reports are actually submitted as expected. Uh, then um, of course there is um, what happens in um, a grant application. Um, we are able to have uh, formative or summative evaluation, and most of you uh, know the difference between the two. When we talk about formative evaluation, we're talking about um, the evaluation that happens in the implementation process of the project. And then again, when we are talking about summative evaluation, uh, we are talking about the evaluation that actually happens once the project has been implemented, that is at the end of the project. And so it is important for us to be able to note uh, the difference uh, between the two as expected. Now, the other thing is um, in this uh, award process also, there's also the issue of managing the budget. And um, um, uh, during uh, the management of the budget, uh, it's always good to make sure uh, that um, uh, we play close attention to financial aspects of the project as much as possible. And this normally requires our very careful monitoring uh, so that the total uh, project uh, actually becomes um, uh, 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 successful because of the monitoring process that we put in place. Then um, again also uh, meeting the project objectives and the target population needs uh, is only half the job. Uh, the organization uh, will actually be held responsible for how it is able to manage um, the program and also the budget as expected. So as it's very, very important understand that as well. Then uh, finally, what we get is the post-award uh, the post award uh, process where we are able to, uh, 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 where uh, implementation and tracking of the grant uh, actually happens, uh, where now uh, we get into ensuring that everything is being implemented and tracking the grant. And then we have the closeout process, uh, which basically allows us to be able to do the administrative and the contract closure of the grant. And also we had the audit where a financial audit is actually conducted uh, at the very end. So, so those are some of the things that we emphasize uh, in terms of the grant uh, uh, management uh, life cycle, uh, which is important for us to be able to understand. Then now, um, Uh, I would also want to be able to emphasize uh, the issue of grant management key issues, uh, which is uh, very, very important uh, to be able to understand. Uh, that is the grant management key issues uh, that we actually need to be able to understand uh, so that we are able to implement uh, we are actually able to implement um, 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 uh, grants without uh, challenges on the key issues that come in the grant management process. And um, what I will do here is I just wanted to summarize um, uh, some key issues, key issues that are involved uh, in the grant management processes. Now, some of the key issues that we find uh, in the grant management uh, process uh, will actually involve uh, uh, pitfalls and issues. Uh, that come in this particular process. And um, one of the things that we always uh, find uh, is a challenge uh, is simply uh, the slow project startups uh, due to vacancies. And so uh, if we have a slow initial hiring and filling of vacant positions, this will always uh, cause the project to get far behind the objectives that cannot be accomplished in time uh, for performance reporting. 
and um, this kind of uh, uh, delays in vacancy filling uh, normally challenge uh, most of the projects and um, it is important for us uh, to make sure that um, we actually uh, understand that um, uh, filling of vacancies can actually uh, really, really uh, challenge uh, most of the projects as expected. Then um, another challenge that we normally find in most um, uh, grant, um, um, uh, grant management um, uh, process is the issue of commingling co of funds. And um, uh, it is um, uh, one of the things that you can always be able to uh, uh, create, uh, do a mistake in case uh, you, you, you do this, uh, the commingling of funds, uh, because grant funds must always be kept in their separate accounts. Uh, this is something that we always emphasize. It's always good uh, to make sure that um, uh, for grant funds, uh, we are able to keep them in separate accounts uh, because um, commingling will always happen uh, when your budget funds, uh, including your grant funds, are put in the same budget account. Uh, so uh, this basically brings the challenge of commingling and um, it is important for you uh, to make sure that um, you always ensure that um, uh, that grant funds um, always are processed in, in separate accounts because uh, if you do mingling of funds, then you will not actually be able to have an accurate um, accounting uh, for 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 uh, for your uh, for your different donors that you actually need to show them how you have actually been able to use uh, your funds. Then another challenge uh, that we normally get uh, also in um, uh, in the grant management process uh, is the control of spending. Okay. Uh, so sometimes uh, we find in some situations uh, it is very, very important uh, to make sure that um, uh, uh, controlling of spending is also very, very critical. And um, an approved grant uh, proposal uh, will clearly and specifically identify how the project funds will actually be spent. And that's why you normally give a work plan. And so uh, we don't want to find a situation where uh, at the end of one month, we had said at least three activities uh, will actually be done by the end of month one. Only to realize by the end of month one, almost all the funds are exhausted. And so that is not a very good practice when it comes to grant management process. And that's why uh, most funding agencies will always ask for a work plan uh, for your uh, implementation of activities uh, so that that is actually uh, well controlled as much as possible. Then another issue that we normally find in most um, uh, grant management process is the issue of supplanting. Uh, so supplanting is another uh, challenge that we normally find uh, because supplanting uh, basically means you are using grant funds uh, to be able to replace funds in operational budget and this is what is supplanting and it is illegal. So uh, anytime uh, you, find your you find yourself in a situation where you are trying to replace funds in the operational budget, then this is the planting and uh, it is actually uh, illegal uh, to be able to do this uh, because uh, some planting uh, sometimes does not actually uh, work out uh, very, very well. And uh, it is important for us to be able to ensure uh, that we do not have a situation of subplanting uh, as expected. So subplanting is something that we should always be able to avoid uh, as much as, as possible. Now, the other thing is the issue of unauthorized travel. And this happens a lot uh, in, in, in certain organizations where uh, reimbursement uh, for travel out of the country or office uh, should, be, uh, should always be dependent on appropriate permission uh, for travel uh, in advance. And so it's always important to ensure if somebody makes an authorized travel that was not uh, actually permitted, then this should not be catered uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the grant funding. So, so it's always good uh, to make sure that um, there is control expenditure when it comes to travel expenses. And then again also, 
uh, it is important to make sure that we uh, there is an issue of purchasing mistakes that always happens. Uh, the purchasing process um, uh, basically should involve a number of tasks, like for instance, uh, you need to secure purchasing authorization, obtain bids uh, from suppliers, uh, double check policies before making purchases, uh, which is the best way to ensure that you are following uh, the proper procedure uh, as expected. So purchasing mistakes uh, should be something that um, we need to make sure that um, we are not able to commit uh, as much as possible. Then the other thing is also the issue of controlling uh, spending. Uh, it's always good to make sure that we are able to control spending uh, as much as possible and um, uh, ensuring that we have an approved grant proposal uh, clearly and specifically identifies how the project uh, funds are to be spent and also changing how these funds are spent without uh, the funding agency approval uh, can always result in certain expenses being disallowed. So, so it's always good uh, to make sure that there's controlled spending because uncontrolled spending will always be an issue uh, for, uh, for the grant management process. Then again also, equipment orders, uh, only purchase equipment that was actually approved in the grant or the funding agency. In fact, in most requests for proposals, uh, most funding agencies will clearly identify uh, what they can actually fund and what they will not actually fund. So it's always good to make sure that um, uh, you only purchase equipment that was actually approved in the grant by the funding uh, agencies as expected. Then the other issues that are there is effort reporting, uh, where grant projects must report as per procedures and regulations of the grant as much as possible. Then the other issue is to make sure that there's proper uh, m and &E data collection, because if there, there's no uh, monitoring and evaluation data collection, and then it will always become very hard to evaluate the project and monitor whether the project is actually working well. So adequate m and &E data collection is always a must for a successful grant project uh, so that it can help us identify what is working and what is not working uh, so that we can continuously uh, be able to make improvements uh, as expected. Now, the other uh, last thing that we need to be able to uh, note uh, is the issue of informed consent and assent, uh, where uh, it is important for us to be able to get permission, uh, consent and assent from participants uh, in advance uh, so that we are able to collect um, uh, personal identifiable information about the beneficiaries, especially about the children or other vulnerable populations that we are going to be able to deal with. So informed consent an assent is also um, a key characteristic that we actually need to uh, be familiar with. And um, uh, it is important to always ensure uh, that we are able uh, to get that uh, as much as, as possible. Uh, basically what we were looking at, uh, looking at informed consent and assent, and um, uh, it is always good to make sure that we are able to get permission, uh, consent and assent from the participants. Uh, so. Uh, so it's good to be able to uh, understand that uh, as much as, as possible. Now let's just look at the last bit, uh, just uh, emphasize some few things about uh, contract management, uh, which is also a critical component of uh, grant management. Uh, it's always good to understand that um, uh, contract management basically specifies the contractual relationship uh, that normally play a central and fundamental part uh, in the grants management process and um, good management of the operational phase of the grant uh, contract uh, is always therefore very key uh, to successful uh, grant delivery and they are normally uh, key activities uh, in contract management I uh, will ensure first is you can provide the delivery that you wanted to provide uh, in the grant that you are awarded then uh, secondly is uh, part of contract management is also to keep the relationship uh, between the two parties uh, and ensuring that it's an open and a constructive relationship. Then the other thing that normally happens is contract administration and change management uh, because sometimes um, when we enter into a contract, changes always happen and then um, how do we process the changes that actually happen uh, in, the, uh, in the process of implementing the project. And so therefore, that's why we're saying a contract is therefore a mutually 
and a legally binding agreement that obligates the grantee and the grantor to enter into a service delivery relationships. And um, uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, the contracting world, uh, normally there are just three types of contracts that you can enter into. Uh, one is what is called a fixed price uh, or a lump sum contract that basically uh, involves um, uh, uh, providing uh, a grantee with a fixed total price uh, for a well-defined uh, product or service delivery that they want to be able to do. Or we have also what we call a cost reimbursable contract that basically involves payment to the grantee uh, for the direct and indirect costs that they actually um, um, uh, meet in performing uh, their work. So, uh, so cost reimbursable is not like fixed price where uh, uh, you know, a certain amount of money is given to the grantee. Uh, in cost reimbursable is you spend your money, then the grantee is able to reimburse you uh, your direct and indirect um, expenses. Uh, or what you call unit price contracts where uh, the grantor uh, is required to pay the grantee a predetermined amount of time, uh, I mean, uh, amount of money uh, per unit of service delivery. So uh, depending on what you do, then I'm able to pay you uh, some amount of money uh, based on what you actually were able to do. So, uh, so it's always good to make sure that we can understand that uh, as much as, as possible. Uh, so, so I think basically that's what uh, we needed to be able to uh, look into. And um, thank you for being able to give us a good listening ear. And I think at this point, I will um, move into, uh, uh, into feedback session, uh, participants' feedback session. Uh, so that we can actually be able to hear uh, what are some of the things that um, you might want to be able to uh, uh, tell us and uh, allow us to be able to understand. So, uh, so that's what we needed to look at. And I'm sure you have been able to give me um, um, a very good uh, listening ear uh, so that uh, I give you that uh, master uh, class on, um, on an introduction to grant management. Uh, we have managed to look at um, most of the critical concepts. Uh, we could not look at everything because time is limiting, uh, but I'm sure you have been able to um, be able to get some of the things uh, very, very clear. And uh, that's always what we do in some of these webinars. Uh, so for now, uh, what I will do, I will just uh, be able to um, invite a few questions. And um, uh, one of the things that we want to be able to do uh, is we want to make sure that you can raise your hand uh, so that we are able to pick you uh, so that you can be able to ask your questions. So, so far I have um, some uh, few people here who have raised their hands and I'm going to give them an opportunity uh, to be able to give us their feedback uh, just before I hand, uh, I hand over to um, uh, Irene uh, to give us uh, the next um, part of the program. Uh, so. Uh, so I have Anwar, Anwar Ahmed. Um, um, I can see you have um, uh, raised your hand. So can you uh, make your comment or your question and um, just be brief so that uh, we can be able to have enough time for the others that also have some comments to make. So Anwar Ahmed, uh, if you can unmute, uh, you can make your question and we will be able to hear. Anwar. Yeah, yeah, because I was uh, unmute. Uh, oh, you, yeah, so you, you made me unmute. Thank you so Hello. much, Stephen Mushime, for your, the, the second day of giving us uh, with this opportunity. So we are very uh, happy to delight to you. Uh, and when we are talking about uh, grant proposal writing, so it need, basically need is uh, some of, uh, must have uh, project management is and other skills. So uh, this is a well-prepared presentation and very concise. So I, I have uh, two questions about the grant uh, proposal writing. So when you did the design of your project and everything that you completed, and when you looked at those international donors or those who are going to get the fundraising, so how can I make sure my grant uh, proposal, uh, it will be one of uh, uh, selected? Or is there any other uh, opportunities? Uh, there, is there any, any other chance that, that push it uh, me uh, to accept 
uh, on my grant uh, proposal, I write it. Uh, okay. The, the other question is, what are the main challenges and what are the steps of before I uh, found or I looked of other uh, the donors, whether local or international, how can I persuade of my uh, uh, project or program that I'm going to implement? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Stephen Shimi. I, I think you got my, my questions, two questions. Yes, I got your questions very uh, clearly. And um, um, I think um, you're asking uh, a very important question. Um, um, I think we have um, also tried to make sure we, uh, we address that. I'm sure once you get your notes, you'll be able to see. And we had a section where we were talking about what makes me uh, know that I can be successful uh, for, uh, uh, for grant funding. I think we were able to stipulate that very clearly, uh, where we were saying it is important to make sure, especially if you're doing a reactive um, uh, uh, grant proposal, um, uh, it's always good to make sure that um, you are always able to uh, follow the specifications uh, of the funding agency because they will always be able to give you uh, a request for proposal uh, document. And so when you're preparing your grant proposal, please pay out, uh, pay attention uh, to some of the details that are, are, are written there. Uh, most of the times I always advise um, uh, organizations or individuals uh, I think sometimes if you don't have a very good uh, a way to interpret uh, some of the requirements that um, grant um, uh, funding uh, uh, agencies would want, uh, make sure you just, just get in touch with someone who is very familiar uh, with the interpretation of uh, some of those um, requirements uh, to tell you exactly what is actually needed uh, in that kind of proposal. Myself, I do that a lot. I, I get contacted by individuals and organizations just to make sure uh, that I'm able to advise them on the best approach uh, to be able to do uh, for a grant um, proposal because uh, sometimes um, um, understanding it in your own and especially if you have not experienced, you don't have experience looking at different uh, funding agencies, uh, you might not exactly be able to put uh, all that is required in a, fun, um, uh, in, a, in a particular proposal as expected. So we always say it's important uh, to uh, be able to contact uh, some, somebody who is familiar with the process for grant uh, applications um, in your region or um, uh, somebody you can be able to get to, uh, to advise you whether you're doing the right, uh, the right thing. Then again, also, as we say, uh, there are certain things that you need to get in place for your organization. Say, important to make sure you have uh, enough staff to implement your organization, your mission, your vision, uh, your operational plans, your strategic plans are well defined. Uh, that also uh, becomes uh, very, very important uh, to make sure uh, that that is in place uh, to ensure that um, uh, you, can, uh, you can actually be able to capitalize on that. Uh, it's always good uh, to make sure that um, uh, you, can, you can capitalize on that as, uh, as much as possible. And um, also, uh, also ensuring that um, uh, you have some good um, uh, uh, funding uh, procedures in your organization. This will also be critical. Uh, you have been able to work with uh, other funding agencies before successfully. That also uh, shows um, a particular funding agency that you can actually manage a grant proposal. And that's very, very critical. Then in terms of challenges, um, uh, yes, challenges will always be there uh, when it comes to uh, uh, funding proposals, and um, that is why we are saying uh, sometimes if you if you know that your capacity uh, is not very good in the grant uh, management cycle, that's why we would encourage you to be able to take a course in grant management like the one that we are offering, uh, so that at least you can be able to ensure that um, you are able to navigate uh, most of these challenges that you 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 might encounter. So I think that's the best way I can answer you, Anwar. And um, I hope I was very, very clear uh, on your questions. Hello, Mr. Stephen. Yes, me, Ahmed, Ahmed, Muhammad. This is Ahmed, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was, uh, yes, yes, unmuted. So I have one request and one question. My request is, uh, your presentation was very fun, 
very good presentation so we request you to send us emails <laughs> after that i want to ask you one question about the uh, grant management i want to establish a new agency or a new organization and in the next month inshallah that work uh, for somali especially Portland. so uh, the organization will be working for humanitarian agency so i want to write many proposals about uh, humanitarian uh, donors so what are the key areas or key uh, the priorities that they give is, uh, donors to priorities when they are provided for grants. Thank you for your time. Okay, Maybe so I would um, I would actually be honest with you, Ahmed. I think um, there was a lot of background noise. I could not be able to capture your question uh, specifically. I think um, there's uh, uh, there's some quite some uh, uh, background noise. And um, I don't know whether you mind to type those questions uh, in the chat platform because it will be easier for me to be able to capture them and uh, be able to answer uh, that. Uh, so um, uh, apologies for the sound uh, breakage on your end uh, because I could not hear you. There's a, there's a background noise that is consistent with your voice and um, uh, it actually um, makes me very, very hard uh, to be able to understand uh, what you mentioned specifically. Um, but I can see uh, somebody is trying to help you here. Uh, they uh, put your question. Uh, so uh, I think, um, Ahmed, if you don't mind, uh, can you be able to do that? But I think I had um, one of the uh, things that you are mentioning regarding whether we can... Can you... Hear, can you uh, Hello, Ahmed? To establish or to... Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so the main steps are to take the organization in order to get a grant, uh, a grant yeah, proposal. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so let me just uh, first of all address that uh, that um, uh, uh, question that has has, has come in, and um, and um, uh, when it comes to the main steps, I think we have said um, uh, grant management is normally uh, um, handled in two ways. Uh, so it's either you go the route of proactive uh, grant application, or rather you go the direction of uh, reactive grant proposal writing. So proactive basically means now you look at, uh, you, you do a search for funding organizations that can actually be able to fund you. You try and establish whether you can make contact with them. Uh, you try to see whether uh, you can get some meetings with them and you try to see whether you can be able to submit some unsolicited uh, proposals for them. Uh, but if you're doing uh, the, the other part, which is the reactive grant proposal uh, process, uh, then here you will be tracking and finding out whether organizations have actually been able to release some requests for proposals, and uh, you can actually be able to um, uh, sit down and uh, consider uh, a proposal, uh, prepare a proposal, submit a proposal, and now, uh, the cycle for the grant management life cycle uh, will actually be able to take place, uh, as we see it, where we have pre-award, award, award uh, post-award, and close-out, and also the audit process uh, for the grant award. So those are some of the typical uh, stages that any grant um, uh, uh, process will always be able to uh, to to go through. Uh, so uh, so those are some of the things that um, you can actually be able to do. And uh, it is possible to always ensure uh, that um, you are able to uh, um, uh, uh, be able to access funding uh, based on that. I think I've seen a um, um, uh, second part of your question here, whether it's possible to get a grant proposal without doing any activity uh, before that project or without experience uh, to look for fundraising. Uh, fundraising is easy. I think people try to complicate it a lot, uh, but it's just uh, when you master the game and when you understand the language of the funders, um, uh, then you are able to easily access funding as much as possible. I've, I've uh, myself, I've, I've had um, um, uh, quite a number of um, uh, grants and uh, individual grants to be able to conduct uh, certain uh, important uh, research studies. 
And um, one of the things is that, um, you know, I did not have to know the funding agency, but all I needed is just to understand what the funding agency really wants for this particular fund and align my proposal uh, to that. And it's very, very easy. I've also helped a lot of organizations uh, be able to uh, apply for funds and actually get funds. And so when I'm talking about the fact that um, a grant, um, uh, uh, a grant um, uh, acquisition of grant proposals and fundraising is not hard uh, using grants, uh, then it's, it's something that you just need to understand, especially some of those things that we have emphasized that um, uh, you should always consider uh, when you're thinking about grant funding. So, so I think that um, adequately covers uh, what Ahmed was trying to look into as they were asking their question. And so uh, I hope I am able to address that to Ahmed uh, clearly. Now, the other thing uh, is, um, let's also hear another question uh, from someone else. And uh, this is okay. uh, Pauline. Uh, I can see Pauline uh, has raised their hand. So uh, Pauline, if you can be able to uh, ask your question, I think it should also be good to uh, be able to hear uh, your question. So Pauline. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. My question is about uh, the challenges of faith-based organizations in securing grants uh, because of their nature. What advice can you give to such organizations? Because most of them have got very viable and important social projects, but then they are locked out by the grant organizations who specifically say Okay, I think. Yes. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, so faith based organizations and um, how they actually are uh, uh, out competed uh, by non governmental organizations uh, that uh, tend to be able to attract funding. And, and, and this, I will answer it very simply, uh, is all about to do with um, how uh, you are able to understand the funding agencies. Because uh, one of the things that you find with international NGOs is that they, uh, they are able to understand requirements for funding agencies uh, very, very easily because uh, remember, there is nobody who gives funding out there uh, to just fulfill your needs. Uh, they are also able to give funding to fulfill their needs first. So, uh, so and, and that normally happens uh, when it comes to funding agencies. Uh, There's always what they want to be able to promote uh, there's something that they will actually want to be known for, and um, it is always necessary to be able to understand that. So, uh, so, so if I'm, I'm, I'm able to look at um, why do we have that specific challenge with faith-based organizations, I will be able to put it down like this. Now, for most faith-based organizations, we know they also have uh, a mission that um, they are serving, which is faith-based, and sometimes it actually becomes very, very hard for them uh, to actually be able to uh, embrace uh, some of the uh, uh, the funding agencies uh, mission and and vision and so sometimes uh, it becomes uh, a clash of values and uh, you know that uh, uh, some uh, faith-based organizations will not be able to support uh, certain uh, emphasis that are that are made by certain donors and um, because of that then they are they are, they are, they are, they are uh, we are able to see a clash of values and um, uh, then they cannot actually be able to access those funds. But for NGOs, we know uh, that as long as uh, they know this is what the funding agencies will actually require, they will always go out of their way to fulfill uh, what the funding agencies actually want. So, so that is maybe um, um, a concern of principle, principles of their operation. And I think uh, that's something that uh, we need to be able to understand. But but, but, but that does not have to be uh, a reason uh, why we should not access funding. I think one of the major challenges that I've found, because I've, I myself have been able to work in a faith-based organization uh, before, and uh, one of the reasons is also uh, where we do not uh, take a good conceptual understanding of what the funding agencies uh, really want uh, for them to be able to fund us and align it with our project um, uh, 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 strategic and operational plans. And I think that's the big disconnect. 
that faith-based organizations will always have, where you are not able to tune what you do uh, based on what funding agencies are actually uh, requiring you to do. So uh, the issue of a clash of principles and values, that is understandable, but the issue of also tuning what faith-based organizations do and being able to ensure that it actually fits with what funding agencies actually want, I think that's something you can make an improvement on and it can allow you to be able to access funding from uh, funding agencies, uh, apart from the clash of values on some of the things that we already know that um, uh, faith-based organizations will clash with uh, most of the uh, uh, funding agencies. So, uh, so, so I think if you can be able to align what you do exactly to what uh, funding agencies will require, uh, 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 specific thematic areas that they want to be able to do, then uh, it can actually be able to work out for the faith-based organization. So Pauline, uh, that's basically what I can advise. Uh, and I hope I've been clear to Pauline. Uh, the other thing that uh, we would also want to be able to uh, hear is um, uh, we have Habat Chitongo. Uh, Habat Chitongo, I think you can take your time also to make your question. Okay, thank you very much, sir. My name is Habat Chitongo. I'm from Zimbabwe. I uh, just want to compliment, uh, to comment on your presentation. Sir. Thank you very much for the presentation. It has been an awakening uh, presentation that you have learned. Okay. You uh, how about you about Chitongo, if you can be loud a bit, uh, if you can be loud a bit or get closer to your gadget, I'm not able to hear you clearly. And uh, uh, I need to be able to answer the question clearly uh, so that I can be able to answer you. Uh, so how about Okay. Uh, please move closer okay. to your gadget uh, so that I can be able to yes, hear sir. you. Yes, can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. Thank you very much, sir, for the presentation. Uh, mine is a question on the skills. You know, sometimes when you want to do a, a job proposal, it needs skills and knowledge. So I'm asking about uh, what skills do one need to have in order to have a successful grant management? Uh, how about, uh, did you just, uh, what makes, uh, what makes it successful? Yes, uh, I'm asking in terms of what we need to have in order to say he has come out with a successful grant. Or what makes it uh, possible to be able to come up with uh, a successful grant? Eh? Yes, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm asking about the skills. What skills should the, uh, I have? Skills, uh, the skills that you should actually be able to have. I think that's a very good question, uh, Herbert, that you're asking, because uh, I think that's uh, something I forgot to uh, highlight uh, in the presentation, but it's a very, very uh, critical thing. I think uh, being um, uh, working in grant uh, writing uh, is very, very important to be able to have uh, a number of skills. And um, uh, one of the, th the critical skills uh, that you'll always be able to have is ensuring that um, uh, you have good uh, writing skills, uh, critical. Uh, so make sure that writing is something that um, you're so much, um, um, uh, you so much appreciate because uh, in most uh, fundraising uh, uh, endeavors, uh, there's nowhere you will find uh, a donor uh, who just gives you funds without um, something that has been written. And so that, that, that tells you the critical importance of ensuring uh, that your writing skills are very, very good. And one of the things that um, uh, nowadays people are doing uh, to enhance their writing capabilities is I've seen a lot of uh, 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 grant writers uh, basically uh, don't just wait until uh, when they can be able to submit proposals uh, so one of the things that I find uh, most grant writers doing is that um, they actually even uh, are getting into the issue of just submitting articles, submitting papers, uh, submitting journals, and that improves your basic capability of convincing uh, whenever you are able to put down 
uh, a particular uh, proposal or a particular application. This goes a long way in improving uh, your writing capabilities as much as possible. So this is something that you can always be able to endeavor. It's also good to have organizational skills, as I think you've seen. Uh, we have emphasized that uh, in the grant proposal writing process, uh, it's always good to come up with a schedule. And so if you're going to come up with a schedule, then that means you have to be good in organizing and ensuring that I'm required to submit this uh, by this particular time. And um, uh, what do I need to do uh, to make sure that I submit and uh, I need to organize myself and all that. Then also presentation skills are very, very critical uh, when it comes to uh, the grant writing uh, process as well. Then again, you can still ignore the technical um, uh, skills that you also need. <clears throat> you need to be competent, uh, knowledgeable uh, in grant management and in project management. And that is why uh, we are asking most of you uh, to make sure that you can subscribe to this course that can sharpen your technical skills when it comes to grant management and uh, project management as well. So, so that's one of the things that I can uh, clearly uh, say regarding the question that uh, I, uh, that that um, uh, was actually asked by Chitonga. And um, I hope I've been I've been clear to you. Uh, but that's basically uh, what you require uh, to be very very good uh, when it comes to that. Uh, thank you for asking that question. And I think um, uh, that question was actually. Uh, very very uh, critical uh, to be able to uh, to be able to respond. To. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, may you kindly check your inbox, sir. I need your details. Okay, okay. So uh, so thank you for uh, uh, making uh, that particular uh, question. And um, I think uh, uh, it's very very important to consider how we can actually be able to. Uh, we can actually be able to have skills uh, in the grant writing process. And um, I think it's very, very good that um, Chitonga has been able to raise that. And uh, it's something that I, I should have included in your presentation as well. Uh, so I think that let's also be able to hear uh, from uh, Ni Adekanya, uh, no, Adekanla. So, uh, so Ni, uh, you can please go ahead and make your question. Oh, all right, thank you so much for that uh, well-delivered uh, session and quite informative. Now, my question is this, just at the tail end of your uh, lecture, or the lecture, you talked about different ways funders can fund a project or a ground. You said uh, the last one is talking about the unit-based uh, fund, that is based on activities, if I am right. Now, the question is, what, what's, how do they, is there a standardized or standard practice for measuring what you do and how you will be uh, rewarded for what exactly you do? One, for the total ground and also for the researchers that will be on board. I don't know if my question is clear enough. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, th thank you so much. And me, I think you are very, very uh, clear in asking your questions. I think you've been very, very clear. I've, uh, I've been able to get your question clearly. And um, um, one of the things that um, uh, is important to be able to mention, I think uh, you are addressing the point where we were looking at the different contract types uh, yes. that a particular grantor uh, uh, organization or agency can actually be able to contract you with because it's always within the choice uh, of the grantor uh, uh, on uh, the kind of contract to actually stipulate for you. And uh, just to uh, remind you, I think we specifically spoke about three types of contracts generally that are identified um, uh, um, uh, so far. And uh, one of those, it was uh, the issue of the fixed price contract and also uh, the cost reimbursable contract and the unit price contract. And um, normally, one of the uh, questions that you're asking is, how do you now be able to measure the unit of work that you actually uh, need uh, to actually uh, be uh, to actually be reimbursed by uh, by the by the donor, and um, how how do you come up with that measure? So so where I found a unit price uh, contract working uh, is, for instance, when um, uh, a, a particular funding agency 
wants to fund a certain organization uh, to be able to do uh, what we call, like they want to make sure you participate in observing a certain day that is critical uh, to humanitarians. Like for instance, uh, you know, we have the International Day for uh, Zero Tolerance on FGM, uh, or we have the International Day uh, of, 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 of the African child, uh, or we also have uh, the International Day for HIV AIDS. And, and if a donor wants to make sure that you are able to certain organizations during that time, then, then what they use is they use what we call the unit price. So they will actually be able to say uh, how much funds do we have uh, within our position. And so standard activities for uh, for, for observing certain days of uh, international observance, we normally have certain predetermined activities. And so it's easy to say uh, we can be able to provide some unit uh, funding for this, uh, unit funding for this organization, unit funding for this organization, because the units are actually clear in terms of what do you normally do uh, in a day to observe a certain international day. The common activities are known. And so they will basically be able to enter into a unit price uh, kind of a contract for, for, for you uh, to be able to observe that particular uh, a special day that needs to be observed by the uh, humanitarian and the development community as we know. So, so basically those are the situations that we'll actually be able to call uh, for your unit price uh, contract. And I hope Ni have uh, been clear to you. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So I think uh, the other question that we have is from Cleofa. Uh, Cleofa, if you're there, uh, please uh, uh, make your question uh, so we can um, uh, answer that and then um, head back to Irene as well. Good afternoon. Yeah, good uh, thank afternoon, you. Cleofa. Thank you very much for the uh, very solid presentation. Um, my question is uh, on the issue of grants and funding. There are, there are time, there are some organizations that call it grants and there's some organizations that call it funding. What's the difference? And then do you as a company uh, assist people to, to in getting grants or funding? That's a question. And especially for non-profits. Okay. okay. For, 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 for profit, for, for profit maybe businesses. Okay. Okay. Not okay. Profit, yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. So I think it's good to uh, uh, the way you have asked your question, Lefa. You also very very clear, and uh, I've gotten your questions uh, quite clearly. And uh, one of the things that um, we want to be able to uh, emphasize when it comes to uh, the whole issue of the difference between funding and 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 and, and the grant. Uh, remember. Uh, funding is general uh, because funding basically just talks about uh, 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 funds that can can actually be received by from hi I lost you Hello. 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 I think we lost Mushami, and uh, I think he's trying to reconnect. I think he's having challenges with his network. So. Okay. Uh, excuse and, me. Uh, please uh, ask your questions uh, shortly, so we can also ask the questions. I mean that we can ask questions. Thank you. I, okay. I, and. Uh, Irene, yes. Can I answer, uh, Cleopa? Please go ahead. All right, thank you, Clefa, for uh, that question. Uh, we have um, a sister company in the Netherlands that uh, assists uh, businesses uh, get financing. Um, in addition to our offering courses, we also assist uh, nonprofit organizations uh, develop proposals for funding. Uh, if you're interested in um, uh, funding for your business, kindly send an email to info at investinginafrica.eu. Info just a minute, just repeat, let me 
let me get that before i think i'll try to also type it here so you can see uh, info info at investing in africa investing in africa, in africa. EU. info let me type it at investing in africa dot co? no no dot eu uh, let me type it there you'll see it there as a chart right there um please please quote this discussion but the most important part is uh whereas uh non-profit organizations are required to do proposals business associations uh, or companies are required to do a business plan so be yes. prepared to do a business plan uh showing uh, -huh. uh what is your area of uh interest whether it's an idea or business growth and uh move forward um, the proposal to potential um uh, uh, partners, funding partners. Uh, let me also um, quickly go back to, um, to a question that was raised, I think, by Pauline. Uh, I think the most important part is uh, that uh, you need to have a good uh, track record. Uh, and that's what most donors look for uh, in the area in which you want to implement your program. Obviously, we talked about we talk about um, a capacity. If you don't have capacity to implement the program, you may not uh, get the funding you're looking for. So that's very very important in this process. And uh, to discuss further, because I see there's a there's a need for um, uh, more information uh, in this area, we we'll run a workshop on uh, specific workshop on uh, uh, proposal writing and fundraising um, next week on Tuesday. So keep in touch and we'll give you the details. Same time, uh, um, you know, 10 o'clock uh, Central European time. I think it's uh, 12 o'clock East African time. Uh, we run a workshop on uh, proposal writing and fundraising so that then you're able to ask all these questions on how to assess funding, the kind of proposals which are funded and, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, unless, is Steve back? Steve? If Steve is not back, I think Irene, you can Steven? come in so then we wrap up. It's almost time. Okay. If Steven is not back, I think we can wrap up. We have uh, spent quite a lot of time. Uh, I'd just like to thank Mushami for the very wonderful presentation. It was very informative. And uh, we welcome all of you to study with us. As you have seen on your screens, we have uh, certificate courses, diploma courses, and postgraduate diploma. So kindly write to us via the emails on your screen, Capacity Africa and uh, Strategia Netherlands, Netherlands are in partnership to offer these humanitarian and development courses. Kindly write to us and study with, with us. If you want to know more about grants management, grant rising, proposal writing, kindly get in touch with us and we are going to offer a 20% discount for all the participants here today. You are welcome to study with us. Kindly visit our website. Thank you very much. Unless there's something else I have left out, I'm looking forward to having all of you write to us. We are going to share this uh, presentation via email. Uh, we, we will use the email addresses you use to register for the, for the webinar. So do not worry. We are going to send uh, the presentation. We already sent last, last week's uh, recordings. That is the M and E and wash we sent to all the participants. If you did not receive, you can just write to us and uh, we will be glad to send. Um, uh, Mr. Karegua, I don't know if you have anything else to add. All right, uh, Irene, uh, just to thank everyone uh, for participating in these uh, sessions. Um, as you know, uh, because of COVID, we are not able to do um, uh, workshops and trainings that are used to happen. So we decide, decide to use uh, this uh, format. Um, the world is connecting uh, using uh, online platforms and we continue to um, offer these uh, sessions. Um, the participation today, I see over 20 countries, Ethiopia, even China, Afghanistan, Netherlands, Italy, Bangladesh, Turkey, India, Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, South Africa, Yemen, Zimbabwe, Zambia. If I've missed your country, thank you very much uh, for participating. Um, and quickly, uh, we'll continue with more sessions. 
This Thursday, we have a session on uh, project management. Uh, Thursday at uh, 10 o'clock at uh, 12 o'clock uh, Central European time. Um, we will have uh, more sessions coming up. Next week, we'll have another session on fundraising and proposal writing. And uh, we have, uh, because of uh, the success of these programs, uh, we have more partners asking to join us. We will have Africa Center for Project Management uh, joining us in the next sessions, Africa Institute for Project Management Services, um, Humanitarian Agenda, and uh, humanitarianweb.org will be joining us uh, in uh, the upcoming sessions. You know, you can see the need for uh, this service and we're happy to, uh, to uh, uh, take lead in this process. Special thanks to Steve for the session, very, very productive, uh, to the team at uh, Capacity Africa, uh, Mark, uh, Nick, Irene, Nora, and uh, Walter. Uh, stay safe, thank you very much, and uh, let's continue with the discussions. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And by the way, I can see uh, an old classmate from Kenyatta University, uh, Sophia Kamuero. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, we last met 26 years ago in Kenyatta University. I'm glad that she's, um, she's uh, doing well. And thank you very much, everyone. And let's continue with the discussion. Thank you. So you don't mention Somalia as you are listed. Yes, the yes, countries. Somalia. Yeah, you forget that. <laughs> yeah, I will not forget. Oh, of course, Somalia. Of course, Somalia. Yeah. Thank you very much, Somalia. Yes, yeah, and, yeah. And Ethiopia. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. We are, we are, the second session webinar for for attending for for this thank, is the second day. Thank you. And, and, I know, and I know there are big needs for capacity building in Somalia, so we are happy uh, to do this. And thank you for joining. Uh, and also, we are happy to, uh, we, we will try to join you, uh, you workshops you. and certificates in yes. the upcoming And we'll month. send you the, the presentations, and please join uh, the project management session on Thursday. And a more we will join, uh, we are ready, we are ready, we are ready, we are ready, we, we are very eager, we are struggling to change our thank you. mindset. And, so, and, and we'll please try, try to share, yeah, please try to share any material that webinar is that we are participated. Thank you so much. Thank you. Your we'll Excellence we'll and you other team. And, and also facilitator, we, we have a great attitude for his uh, Thank you. Steve, uh, Steve do you have something to say? Uh, you see, I can see Steve, uh, Steve Mushami is back. Steve, would you like to say something? Steve? All right, thank you guys. And uh, let's continue the conversation. And uh, together we'll make a difference and make the world better. Bye bye for now. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, all participants and also team leaders. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Aaron, thank you so much again because uh, you you took the, the key role for thank having you. this session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Somalia. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. <laughs> see you next webinar. All right. We'll be joining you. Okay, see you soon. Bye bye.